Clint Smith, founder of Thunder Ranch, was once quoted as saying, it's pretty simple. God and Stoner got it right to start with, and this is, in my mind's eye, the pinnacle that I've searched for. I could never get anyone to quite go where I wanted to go, and this is it. This is not necessarily an improvement on Stoner's design, it's an addendum to it. To make this gun more shootable for more people. It's about making the gun just a little bit better for a lot more people. So stop into Guardian now to pick up this limited edition M4E1 today. Hello, I'm Clint Smith, we're at Thunder Ranch, and I wanted to talk to you about our new co-branded product with Aero Precision. You all know the AR platform. Uh, without being ugly, uh, I've shot this platform for 50 years, and I've used it in uh, both the military and law enforcement, so I have a pretty good idea about it, and I've been teaching with the rifle since 1983. In 1983, I started um, a program called Urban Rifle, and in layman's terms, it was about how to shoot a rifle and use a rifle effectively inside what would normally be considered a pistol range, which at that time was 50 yards and closer, and now it's more like 25 yards and closer, and so on. That said, on the Thunder Ranch rifle, um, we'll start from the back to the front, and there are a couple of things uh, that people, I think the fancy lawyer word, would find arguable, and of course that's that's why we're kind of discussing this here. This particular one, um, again, because it's co-branded, because of the real subtle things that we did to it, uh, it has the Thunder Ranch logo. Doesn't make the gun shoot better, uh, but I'm happy about it, so um, that's good. The top uh, near the side also has the Thunder Ranch logo. Again, doesn't make it shoot better, but we already covered that, so you kind of get an idea. Um, in the lower itself, what I wanted to discuss with is the trigger guard. It's solid like on original military models, you push the pin and you can open it up for winter and I get it. Um, but these are slightly larger, so those people with gloved hands can still get the job done, so it works pretty good. Um, the windows. Okay, let's clarify a point. These are not for weight reduction. They never were, that was never my idea. That, that's, that's not it at all. Um, the windows themselves, and we've had the argument like, well, it's not a very good idea because structurally you'll make it the gun weaker. Um, I would point out to you um, that this is serial number four. Uh, yesterday we drug it behind a truck, they ran over it with a truck, they threw it out of my tree house, and I would point out to you that structurally it didn't hurt a damn thing. The single biggest thing that I've seen with shooting this rifle in 50 years, okay, is that the gun, what makes the most amount of trouble, other than it exploded, okay, is a V or a wedge, what historically would be called a double feed. One either fired or not fired, trying to get in or get out, and one out of the magazine trying to get in or try to get out. So the problem with it is, most of the time, when you lock it back, okay, when you lock it back, your only real access point is historically, people talked about like old Sword Your Fortune articles said, carry a big knife and stick it in there and pull it out. I go like, uh, probably a bad idea. Uh, I saw people who carried screwdrivers to stick it in. Intensely, the screwdriver was for that purpose. Since a lot of people shoot this rifle now, I mean a lot of people, probably the second most popular rifle on the planet next to the Kalashnikov. The problem with it was is the only really way to get in was to go in here, okay? Then you had to get your fingers out of the way so that the bad stuff could vomit out the bottom. So there were people like method in here. And you had to have fingers long enough to do it. Since so many smaller stature people shoot this gun now, I think that this is something that's helpful. So that would be, in my mind's eye, the bottom half of the gun, okay? Great, next point. In my personal opinion, there are two things that kind of can screw you on this gun other than the fact that you'd get a stoppage. One is the charging handle because people pull it back and then they ride it home creating stoppages. The next one, I see no sense in trying to pound something into the chamber that it's not willing to go on its own. Hence, there's no forward assist. It's just that simple, all right? And then people go like, well, what happens if? Okay, great, we'll talk about what happens if, okay? So if you didn't get the word 50 years ago, if you get something where the bolt is not closed, okay, God and Stoner originally agreed that the idea of putting your finger or thumb in this dish in the bolt, which is why you don't want to buy some fancy custom bolt, just get a regular bolt with the dip in it. That dip actually is the forward assist and you heard it click. So the idea that I either dropped the gun, fell down with the gun, it's a battlefield pickup, and or I personally pulled it back, checked it, and then I didn't let it go forward smartly enough, I can stick my thumb in here and push forward. 
which I've done on many occasions. I'm confirming that the bolt rotated, locked into place, and we're good to go. This, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, is the original forward assist. So I don't have to have something to pound it in. After that, okay, I think this color is called a FDE. So the gun comes in brown. I think it also comes in a black capability as far as like the Thunder Ranch Special. Barrel length, okay, it's a lighter weight barrel by my thought compared to like a big bull barrel or something like that. It can come in two forms, either 14.5 or, and then that would be hider and pin and or 16. Both of those, you got it, the rifle thing. Um, the top has a rail for all the stuff that you want to add on top, which I'm not a big add on top guy, but you get the point. You want to put your dot sight, whatever. The sides are the M lock. And in this case, just so you can see it, I put rails on the bottom. So if I wanted to put a bipod, you know, you want to, shoot, I don't know, mount a grenade launcher on it, okay? Like whatever you want to do, but that kind of gives you an idea. This is another uh, Thunder Ranch rifle, but it gives you an idea of what it could look like. It's the plain Thunder Ranch rifle with an ambi, with a dot, and with, in this case, a foregrip. I'm very pleased with this rifle. So if you get an opportunity, um, look at Arrow Sight. They have a lot of other products too. So if you get a chance, take a look at it. Let us know what you think. Thank you. Mm -hmm.